We're going to be on just a second. We got what's new. Okay. Okay. Welcome to What's New. Tonight we have some lovely guests. And we have a gentleman among us tonight. <laughs> so uh, we will let Aris introduce you and start the program. Okay. Tonight we have information about all kind of things. Yeah. So we're going to start with Annette Rolf, and she's going to tell us all about the Christmas holidays. Holiday Christmas Festival. Yes, uh, this is our 35th annual Holiday Christmas Festival. And as you know, I'm, uh, if you're a, a real St. Genevievean, uh, the festival, I believe, started 35 years okay. ago. Um, and it was started, uh, back then it was called the Country Christmas Walk. Right. And people, they, you know, the merchants would put out cookies and Wassail and, and just make it a real special thing. And, uh, you know, we'd have the little French singers going around town singing the Lechon Tours, I believe they were called. And it was a special treat. And, um, and the municipal band always played. And so, oh, I moved here, oh, 2005. And by 2007, I had become the uh, executive director. <laughs> so we made some changes. Um, we started adding the musicians. And, uh, I thought it would be really special if we could turn it into some a type of festival of music, for one thing, around the holidays for people to enjoy. And the reason, I, I thought the parade was going to be so big that all these people would come to town and it would keep them in town all day. That was one of the reasons I did it. But I wanted to make it special. So I went back and did lots of research on, um, I make sure that all, we start with the Baroque period. You know, I make sure the four main genres of music are covered. It would be Baroque, Classical, Romantic, and Impressionistic. Uh, for instance, and anything after that is spun off, uh, if you're looking back into the arts. Uh, the Baroque artist, she'll be performing Saturday at the Gibord Valley House, Megan Hothouse, who's been with us now 12 years. She came when she was a student, and now she is an orchestra director and a symphony performer. Uh, and she brings back with her every year people that I have known for about that long that are now symphony performers. And so they will be performing uh, at a string quartet at the uh, Lutheran Church, the Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Evangelical Lutheran Church. And they will be covering Romantic period and Classical period music in the Austro-German style. Uh, then the Impressionistic would be on Sunday at the Welcome Center with Megan Hothouse again doing the Impressionistic period. The reason I go into this is because our art guild is so renowned at this point statewide and music is art and art is music and it goes quite well together. And that's why I think it's very important that we just touch base on that. Right. We have a lot of, we have local artists that have come back every year, Bill and Patty Nager will be with um, the French singers. Um, the, the, <laughs> I probably have to look out if it's pronounced that. La Frenza, oh, what did she call Le herself? Le Chanteurs. The, pardon me? Le Chanteurs. The La Chanteurs, that was the little singers. Uh, that would be, where are we here? Bill and Patty Nager will be here. Uh, the La Chanteur Francais, which means the French singers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you are. So I just had to look it up. So, but yeah, the La Chanteur. <laughs> In all these years, it's the first time you've ever had to do that. I know. So I've never there had to you do are. That. I feel really embarrassed, but they got their name out there. Bill and Patty Nager, okay? <laughs> and they will dress up in French costumes on the tree trimming, the night of the tree trimming, and sing in classical French old songs from the period music of the town, uh, about the time our town was founded, around 1735. And then you have the uh, the madrigal singers from high school performing. Gary Shiel will be the host. And that's always real special, too, because uh, Gary will lecture, and not lecture, he speaks and goes back into time and talks about how our town was founded in 1735. And we have the French, the Spanish, the English, and you know, we sing all these carols. They meet Santa and Mrs. Claus, the children do. The tree is wonderful. Every year we go to both schools, the public school and the Catholic school, and the children make homemade ornaments that are on the tree, and they can come view their ornament. And that is a special treat for everyone. Everyone seems to enjoy that. Mm -hmm. um, what else do we have? Uh, uh, Saturday we'll have, uh, besides the Austro-German band, at the uh, Catholic church, SEMO uh, will be coming up with their chamber choir again. 
Matt Palish, East Professor of Organ um, at SEMO, also is coming up, and he's also the Director of Music for St. John's Lutheran in Jacksonville. He's bringing up 60 Cantori singers and, and a bell choir doing uh, lessons and carols, which is the Christ story, the Christian story, uh, at the Catholic Church on Saturday also. And that's a really must-see. It's very, very special. Um, the, we have on Sunday Dr. Isaac LaSalle has been with me now for years and years. He will be here performing 500 years of French, Spanish, and English mu music at the German, uh, in the German church, <laughs> at the Lutheran church, you're right, this is the second time <laughs> I've done this now, yeah. at the Holy Cross the Evangelical Church. And uh, that's always a treat also, because he, on Saturday, will have his Latin trio come up with Dr. Kelly and Professor Jimmy Beers, and they're all three award-winning professors from SIU Carbondale, and they'll be at the Presbyterian Church on Saturday afternoon. That's always a treat. We have so many treats. Um, you know, French Cafe singers, they'll be back again this year, and everybody seems to come back. And the, what I hear especially is they come back because they love this venue. They love it. They love our town so much. They think it's such a respectable place and so charming, and the people are lovely. And they've always gotten such an invited feel that they always want to come back. And these are very, very high quality performers. And a lot of them come, like, uh, we're here from, you know, say the, the French Cafe singers coming in, uh, Adele Martin and Bluzette. Uh, her contemporary, he is a professor at Principia College. They're all, like, from very elite colleges coming in, the instructors, they're prodigy students, etc. Another uh, performer that I think is really, truly outstanding is Gary Huggins. Uh, he c plays the saxophone. He sounds kind of like Kenny G. I think he's really a popular person. Uh, we have a great uh, harpist coming in this year on Sunday again. There's, it's just so much going on. And of course, we have our beloved municipal band. Uh, Saturday, the parade. We have uh, free crafts for children at the Oris. What else is going on? Um, Free photos with Santa, and free hot dogs, and a bag of chips, and a bag bottle of water if you're under 12 years old at the Lions Park. Free shuttle rides throughout the historic district. You know, it's just a it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, weekend. And um, I learned yesterday uh, I was having lunch at one of the local restaurants, and I met a lady and her daughter, and they're real sad that they couldn't come this year. They're from Huntsville, Alabama. And they've been coming every year oh <laughs> because goodness. they love it so much. Yeah. They come up and visit family in Farmington. And this year they came early and they're really disappointed that they don't get to go to the Christmas festival. So we have another couple comes in every year from Denver and Chicago and different places, not just our local people. And uh, we invite people mostly within the hour and a half radius. The other people, they just hear about it and come in. But right. it's become now a destination for most people. So any questions? It is a great event. I, I have one. How, um, how did you contact all these people? I mean, how did you know about them? Just uh, Well, I do. Uh, originally, when I started, um, uh, had, I was at, somebody asked me to line up a parade. I said, yeah, I can line up a parade, you know. So uh, right when we were, I got a little tiny committee together back then. Now I have a different way of working this, you know, I have subcommittees and different oh, things, you okay. know, cause, but uh, back then it was just a few people and we looked and we're like, hey, we gotta call the municipal band, let them perform. You know, we didn't even know what we were doing, okay. So, and, and then we realized we had to make wreaths for the historical building, so we didn't have any money at all. And so I went around town asking people for $25 so I could buy some chicken wire, you know, so we could make some wreaths. Well, I ended up having, we got enough money for the wire, and there was some money left over, so I called down to SEMO, Southeast Missouri State University, and I had them send me up two cellists and a violinist and to perform at the historical sites, and it went over really well. So within the next couple of years, I asked the, one of the, violin, the violinists, Megan Hothouse, who used to be Megan Thompson, she's married now, uh, if she could put together a string quartet. And so in the inner in the interim, I really researched this. Megan, on the in other hand, she, uh, I went through school with her almost. You know, like oh, I didn't go okay. to school with her, I went through with her. She's now like a surrogate family person to me, okay, because <laughs> I really care about her. But uh, when she was getting, by the time she got her master's degree at SIU Carbondale, I had a classical guitarist coming up, and he had gotten very ill and couldn't come, and the head of the department, which is Dr. Isaac LaSalle, called me up and said that he was going to take 
the young man's place because he didn't think anyone was as skilled as him and he thought he wanted to make a good representation of the school. And he is one of the main ones who told me he loved this event so much he likes coming back every year. The next year he called me and asked me if he could bring his Latino jazz band up. And so then it got word of mouth. Like Adele Martin and Bluzette, uh, she heard about the event and she called me and wanted to be in it. And she's fabulous. And she's on Saturday and she does French cafe music. It's wonderful. It's, it's Bill and Patty do the old French music from historic St. Genevieve. That's what you would be singing back then, that period of time. Uh, and she does more current, you know, 20th to 21st century cafe music, but it, it's just a low, like a really fun thing. Mm -hmm. But in the interim, it was mostly about research, like I said, trying to research where I wanted to fill this in. And Megan, I will give her high acclaim, she worked with me a lot. I told her what I wanted. And she then started connecting me with people. She connected me with Isaac LaSalle, and I let her take over the strings at one point, helping me to put the strings together. And in the interim, I called SEMO uh, to get their singers here, and they loved it. They, they asked me to come back every year now. Well, that's wonderful. And so now people will ask me to come back instead of me asking them. It's so wonderful. it kind of built on word of mouth and yeah, just it's contacting different it's a, people. It's a very respected uh, venue. I call it a venue at this point um, because it offers so much. Uh, you'll hear some Gregorian chant with the chamber choir, but they go up to, to 21st century singing. But I try to cover, go back to the Gregorian because that's what you would have heard in the Catholic Church. In the Lutheran Church, that would have been the Austro-German period during the Enlightenment. Bach wrote a lot of the Lutheran hymnals, so that should be in that venue. And the Presbyterian Church, I mean, in Chicago on uh, Michigan Avenue, they have a, a Fourth Presbyterian, I think that's what it's called, on Sundays. They have a jazz service at 4 o'clock, and it sounds like Ella Fitzgerald in this church, you know, singing church music, and it's fun. So that's why I put the jazz ensemble over at the Presbyterian Church. Oh, and so, um, the Presbyterian or the Lutheran? The Presbyterian. The Presbyterian. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so there was reasoning, a logic as to why each went to each venue. So, um, yeah, we've just worked on this. Uh, it's been a, it's a lot of work, a lot. And every year I think, oh, I can't do this. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know like a, but um, the end result, it's magnificent. It, it is. really is. It uh, is. To, to see so many happy people, and people come back every year. Like one couple comes in from Troy, Illinois every year, which is about an hour and a half or two hours from here. And every year they come back for this event. And every year another couple comes in from St. Peter's. And I said, well, I don't advertise in St. Peter's. How do you know about this? And the gentleman and his wife told me that we drop programs off uh, at the, a lot of the churches in St. Charles. Oh, okay. And he said that one of his friends goes to such and such church in St. Charles, and every year the friend gets them a program, and they come every year. So we drop these programs off at a lot of churches. Um, we do 15,000 programs in the you know, bi-state area. Uh, this is the program, and we use the same design, so people, when they see it, they're like, oh, wow, the programs are out. And because um, I've been to Chester before over in Illinois, and I take them over to Rosier, so like, oh, look, St. Jen's got their programs out. You know? Excuse right. me, Charlie, we have one on your board here on the table. There it is. Yeah. You can put it on the camera for you. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I wanted to see that. There. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we put this together, and I, this is the, the logo uh, on the back or a list of all the sponsors. Um, every year, the Municipal Band has been a generous sponsor with us, quite a few years, actually. Once we started developing the music, they have really been quite kind to us. Um, the St. Genevieve County uh, Community Foundation is very generous. We have several other big, uh, generous donors. Sid, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, now we got that one now, yeah. And they are, uh, you know, we put them in different categories. You have the silver sponsors, which are really equally magnificent. They'll go up to gold, platinum, and then, of course, the diamond. And we put these on 15,000 programs, the sponsors, and we also put the sponsors on the St. Jen website. And we also have a board up at the Welcome Center. We keep it up uh, throughout the holiday, you know. And so to make sure that everyone is treated with an appropriate amount of respect. Because if we didn't have these sponsors, we wouldn't have this, 
and we would not have this magnificent program. Right. And we are very lucky for everything involved. It came together. You know, it's a matter of hard work, ethics, uh, a lot of talent, and a lot of perseverance. And so um, I, I, we're especially lucky to get these musicians, too, because these are wonderful. You will never go to an event like this anywhere that you have this much beautiful, exquisite music, free. you know, free. And we're not in a honky tonk on Broadway in Nashville. You know, right. I mean, so, I mean, it's, you know, it's just a really elegant, it is magnificent event that everyone should go to and bring their children and their grandchildren and, you know, friends from wherever. Because I, 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 I think it's a wonderful event. It you is. Know? It's and I could not work this hard if I didn't think it was magnificent. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. You know. Are there yeah. any more questions? As always, you just really, <laughs> I did, I'm just so fascinated that you can go through that whole thing with, <laughs> without oh, really yeah. looking I do want to make another announcement, two more. Um, the Art Guild now is at the old historic museum building right. and permanently, and they will be there throughout the Christmas festival, and uh, the Academy Hill will be performing there, which is a bluegrass oh, okay. band, yes, yeah. and uh, for their special opening on 4 o'clock on Saturday. And another announcement, uh, the Royal <coughs> Revion, um, will, which has been celebrated for many, many years, which normally would uh, be the weekend after the Christmas festival, uh, has moved permanently to Saturday. And what the La Ravion is, uh, it's over um, in the Mamie Shaw house, and you have all the historic people dressed in their costumes, the actors. They'll be playing, playing hammer dulcimer music by a renowned hammer dulcimer specialist. Um, Rick Thumb is his name, uh, for about four hours, and they show you all the historic customs of an early 1800s Christmas with the proper foods, the 12 days of Christmas, <laughs> um, yes. etc. And that's a real special event and a real additive to our culture. Uh, it's already been in our culture, but uh, it's wonderful for that day because we get so many people from so many different places and right. they can see how old St. Genevieve really was. Bob Mueller every year, and it's going to go with his lecture too, he lectures on Christmas uh, traditions from the early 1700s and the 1800s, meaning you have the French Christmases and then when the Germans came in. <laughs> and so, because we do have a German culture here too, you know, right. at one point. But it's all historical. and. In, it's wonderful because it adds, again, a, a special flavor. And even if you're from here, you can go to those events year after year after year and be so proud of your town. The one thing I've noticed about St. Genevieve, most people are so proud to live here and so proud to be from here. And if they've moved here as a transient, they love the culture so much, they will never leave. And so just welcome, you know, and have a Merry Christmas to all. Yeah. Okay? Well, thank you thank so you. much, Annette. Thank yeah. you, too. And I hope yeah. you all have a nice evening. And you also. You thank you. And Good night. Wonderful weekend. Yeah. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, too. Happy Bye. Thanksgiving to you also. Huh? Okay, who's next? Go for it. You want me to go? You can go, <laughs> okay. Mr. Schott. Sure enough. So, uh, I, I'm Introduce here tonight. Introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Jason Shaw. I'm the uh, Chief Deputy with the Sheriff's Office in St. Genevieve County. <clears throat> but I'm also uh, one of the uh, board members for the local backstoppers organization in St. Genevieve County. Uh, myself and Eric Coleman, uh, we uh, kind of spearhead that organization in St. Jim County. Uh, for, for those who don't know what Backstoppers is and how it got started, back in 1959 there was a prominent uh, businessman up in uh, St. Louis that was concerned about the first responders that were being killed in line of duty and their, their loved ones left behind having no support. And he'd heard about an organization up in Detroit called the 100 Club and, and that organization uh, kind of started up to uh, monetarily support those uh, first responder families left behind. Uh, so he went to the publisher of the uh, Democrat, the St. Louis uh, Globe Democrat at the time, and, and pitched the idea to him about starting up the, the same organization in St. Louis. So they started some meetings up to get the, the interest out to see if there's anybody interested in being part of it, uh, going to local business people and, and uh, labor leaders and different civic uh, leaders up in St. Louis. And in September, uh, September the 11th, actually 1959, they signed a charter and Backstoppers was formed. Uh, and by February of 1960, they already had five firefighters that were killed in line of duty that they were supporting. So it didn't take very long. 
Uh, Backstoppers is governed by a 30 member board of uh, directors and it has an executive director and they provide needed assistance for the spouses and children of uh, law enforcement, firefighters, uh, uh, tax funded uh, EMS and uh, uh, paramedics and EMTs that are killed in the line of duty. They also have uh, a catastrophic fund. So if you get one of those first responders that has a major catastrophic injury and they can't go back to work, they come in and they help do a one-time uh, assistance there. But it, it, if unfortunately the, the first responder is killed in the line of duty, uh, the first thing they do is they come in and they give the, the family a $10,000 check for incidental needs. Uh, they come back a few weeks later and they sit down with the family and they go over their finances and they pay off their, their, their entire debt. So slate clean, they, they have, mm -hmm. Uh, no debt at all. They'll pay off the house, they'll pay off the cars, uh, they, they provide the health and dental insurance, uh, reimburse out-of-pocket costs for medical, and they also assist in educational costs all the way from child care all the way through graduate school. And that even includes if uh, the student wants to go study abroad, they pay for that as well. Uh, currently, they're uh, serving 80 families and 65 children. Since uh, 1959, they've assisted over 160 families uh, in this. Their annual uh, budget that they, they pay out to assist these families is uh, a little over $1.5 million. And they're funded, how they, how they collect their money, is they're funded through memberships. So individual people like yourself or me, we, we can actually become members. There's different levels that they have uh, to be a member. And that brings in about 800000 of that $1.5 million. The rest of that money comes from fundraisers. Uh, different organizations have fundraisers to help uh, support that. Uh, they pay about $200,000 in educational cost each year for the children that they support. The, the coverage for Backstoppers is actually uh, all the way from Pike County up north, all the way down to Cape County, and goes as far west as uh, Washington County. There's 13 counties in the state of Missouri that they uh, cover and there's five counties in Illinois that they cover. So that, in, that includes, you know, even if you have highway patrol in those counties, uh, conservation agencies, agents in those counties, they, they also cover them as well. Uh, 2006, St. Jim County got into uh, Backstoppers, and in 2007, we started a golf tournament to, to benefit them because we wanted to be active and help assist them. Uh, we have just had our 13th annual tournament this past September. Uh, we have raised, with, with this past September, we've raised over 150000 uh, in those 13 years for Backstoppers as a system. And our tournament is always at a third Friday in September, and we're averaging about $12,000 a year is what we raise for Backstoppers. So that's uh, pretty much in a nutshell what Backstoppers is about. Yeah, I never understood, because you always get so aggravated at all the robocalls you get. Sure, and sure when you don't understand an organization right. or where they're coming from. Right. And one thing so with I'm Backstoppers, one thing with Backstoppers, they will not, never do those robocalls. Mm -hmm. They will never make phone calls to help solicit or, or try to solicit. So if you ever get a phone call and somebody says, hey, this is Backstoppers or we're trying to solicit funds, they, they don't solicit that way. That's not really Backstoppers. That's right? really not Backstoppers, no. And no. they do that all the time. Well, you, you have some groups out there that robocall. And, and what the sheriff tells people, what I tell people, before you give, get on the internet and check that organization out. See if they truly are what they say they are. But if it's an organization that's collecting money for uh, fallen uh, law enforcement officers or fallen firefighters, if you don't know who, know who that organization is, but you want to contribute to something like that because you think it's a good organization, Backstoppers is that organization. Don't, 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 don't donate to somebody robo calling you because you really don't know where that money is going. Right. Because that company is robo and calling you, That's they got to make money. Sure. They got to make money somehow to pay the people making the phone calls. Right. So the organization that they're collecting for, how much of that money is truly going to that organization? Exactly. exactly. So or any of it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's easier to, to give local where you know it might be going. So do you have um, places where you can donate locally? I mean, are there? Well. You can always go online and donate to Backstoppers for something like this uh, because the money actually comes back into St. Jim County. Uh, okay. We do have a family that we support in St. Jim County. Okay. Uh, if you remember back in uh, 2009, David Grass Jr. was a local firefighter for St. Jim City who uh, died to, because of a medical uh, emergency while he was oh, training. Right. So we actually support uh, his family. Okay. Uh, we're still supporting his uh, children all the way through uh, the college whenever, they, you know, wherever they decide they want to go. And mm -hmm. So. That, 
giving to them is actually giving back to into St. Jim County. Mm -hmm. So people actually want to give to backstoppers, but they don't know how to give. They can always uh, come up to the sheriff's office and see me because we have our own account for backstoppers. Uh, we're getting ready to take a check up to them from our last golf tournament, which uh, this year we raised about 17,000 for them. So we'll be taking up a check to them uh, next week uh, to give to them. So we, we can take the donation there, put it in our account, and eventually transfer it up to uh, the St. Louis chapter that, that oversees everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because we, you know, you get so many of those calls sure. from everybody, and I always say no because yeah. Yeah, well, you don't know where it's you going. You don't know where it's going, you right? Really don't. You really don't. Yeah. So. Don't send me a letter. But I noticed yeah. in St. Louis they have. Uh, fundraisers for yeah. backstoppers. Yeah, all they they have a, a lot of fundraisers throughout the year, um, mm -hmm. all the way through the the 13 counties in, in Missouri and five counties in Illinois. I mean, that's truly out of the you know one 1.5 million dollars, only 800 thousand of that is from membership. So the only way they survive is by by fundraisers mm -hmm. and, and getting that money to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, what are your membership levels? Uh, the, the cheapest one, there's, there's probably six or eight different ones. Uh, the cheapest level is what they consider just a single person. That's $150 a year. And then uh, what they consider a family is like two, two person. That's 250 And then it goes all the way up to $10,000 for, you know, the, the biggest sponsorship. If you want to be the sponsor or something like that. But they have different levels. Their website uh, has uh, that all listed on there. Like I said, I think there might be six or eight different levels. Oh. But... Okay, now we know. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and so when will be your next event then? So our, we only have the one main event each year, the, the golf oh, tournament. Okay. So that would be next September. Uh, this past year we actually had some uh, outside uh, organizations actually do their own fundraising and bring it to us, like Wine Garden JC's did a barbecue uh, and raised money for them. Uh, the lawnmower races up in the city park did a fundraiser farm and, and got the money to us. We actually had a couple of local families, uh, uh, Connie Bowman and her husband and Tim Heller and uh, his wife, they did a lottery tree and sold uh, chances for the lottery tree and, and that money went towards backstoppers. So, you know, any organizations like that want to do that, uh, that help support it, we can we'll definitely okay. uh, appreciate That's it. That's nice to know because if I didn't know it, I'm sure a lot of other people out there. Sure didn't understand yeah. it either. Yeah. yeah, anybody can fundraise for them. They, they just have to get everything approved through Backstoppers in St. Louis. And once they give that approval, then, then they're fine. But here in town, yeah. they can come to you. Right, and then I can get Take that, I there. can go up to St. Louis and pre present it to them and they can give the approval, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, it's good that organization. It's really needed. Good organization. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. Uh, for, for, for first responders, I always tell, especially the people who work at the Sheriff's Office, I always encourage them to become members as well because even though they benefit from it, they can be members as well. You know, and, and what's cheaper insurance than $150 a year for your knowing your family is going to be supported if something happens to you? So right. it's uh, it's really a good organization. Yeah. That is, that's a wonderful organization. Never understood it before. Sure. No, what me? <laughs> I didn't either. Like I said, I kept thinking, what's a back <laughs> <laughs> Sure. sure. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> So That's what I called and I told Iris, I said, I've got to find out what this is. <laughs> I'm glad you did. I am too. Yeah. So, well, is that it? Do you that's have any all, Unless you've got any questions for me, but that's, okay. that's it in a nutshell. Well, that's great. Yeah. Good, uh, good organization. Well. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, you said what we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for coming yeah, on. Thank we you. Appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. We hope we get out to the community. We hope people, a lot of people are watching. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of older people always say, hey, we saw you on television. <laughs> so, okay, now we you have Miss Kathy. Yep, I'm Kathy Kreitler, and I'm here on behalf of uh, the St. Genevieve County Community Service um, Forum. And what they're doing is sponsoring a domestic violence lunch and learn. I'll see if I can put that there. Um, we have a guest speaker coming up from the Safe House for Women. Her name is Marianne Robertson, and she's a trauma specialist. Her entire career, she's devoted to um, helping people deal with trauma. 
And so what we're going to do is um, have it December 11th, which is a Wednesday. She's going to be able to speak from 12 to 1, and then she's going to be there early to answer questions and late to answer questions. So we're wanting to do um, like a town hall meeting where it's not real formal. We're wanting to an she's wanting to answer questions that people might have with dealing with domestic violence. Domestic violence is like the skeleton in the closet. Nobody wants to admit that it's an issue, sure. but it actually is. Um, there's a one in three women and one in four men will experience domestic violence in their life as an adult. People don't realize that men can be, women can be just treat them terribly sometimes. Yeah, men can be victims as much as women. Well, not equally, but um, I think it's- in different ways, I might yes. have it in here. Um, one in seven women and one in 25 men have been severely injured by an intimate partner, where it's mm -hmm. severely in injured. But yeah, it can be men and women. You know, it's mostly women that are yeah. abused. Yeah. But uh, men definitely can be. Um, let's see. So and that in a long time injuries do. Yeah. Well, yeah. one thing that people don't necessarily think of, I was looking at the questions that are, um, she's wanting to answer things. It's, I got off track thinking. Um, people don't want to talk about it because they don't want to admit it's there, but like you said, it can affect you for a long time. And so she's going to answer questions about what is domestic abuse. Some people don't think of things like um, not having money. The partner can not let you have any money where you can't even grocery shop or they won't give you an, even an extra dollar to get a soda because they control everything. That's actually domestic abuse. People don't think of that. And then there's like spiritual abuse. Either they can force their spiritual views on you and force you into a religion that you don't want to be part of, or it can be the other way around where they won't let you express yourself spiritually and things. And those are domestic abuse also. So people don't necessarily understand exactly what it is. A lot of people wonder why, why do they stay in an abusive relationship. And there's actually, um, the speaker is going to explain that more. It's actually a relationship between like a sociopathic narcissist personality disorder. So this, this guy, I'm going to say guy because it's most likely a man that's abusing most percentage wise. Um, if he, he's, I call it like a bully where he would be like um, forcing things onto her like she can't have the money or physically hurting her but also um, the mental abuse is actually worse. They say that a physical, like a bruise, you can say this is how bad it hurt and then it'll go away and it heals and it's, it's gone. But emotional scarring, that can stay with you forever until you get treatment, you know. It could take years and years and years of treatment to heal from that. And she, you know, she's going to kind of explain, you know, and the, the victim side is, if somebody walks up to you, I always say, and punches you in the face, you know that's abuse. But if somebody kind of puts you down, shoves you a little bit, walks past you and knocks you over, and, and that's your daily life, they kind of bully you down to where you can't respond appropriately, and then you're being hit, you know, and you, you don't respond like you should have because he's groomed you or the abuser's groomed you. So she's going to explain more of that dynamic because a lot of people don't understand and don't want to put forth the time to help them get out of it because they don't want out. But they do want out, they just aren't able to get out on their own. So anyway, and um, what, can they, what can a person do or say to help them and, you know, should and how can they help them. So she's going to answer questions like that, but I brought um, some statistics, which we'll have more if you come to the Lunch and Learn. It is free. And like I said, it's uh, sponsored by the St. Genevieve County Community Service Forum. Um, it says that uh, 1 in 15 children are exposed to domestic violence, and 90% of these children uh, I witness the violence, they actually see the violence, and then that stays with them to where they need help, you know, getting over it, because it makes an imprint on who they are. Anyway, there's more. Um, uh, Officer Schott that was just here told me that in uh, 2017, from October to December, they had 24 reports of domestic violence in the county, not in the city, just the county. And in 2018, we had 42 reports, and in 2019, we had 50 reports. Mm -hmm. And just in the county, I don't have the city numbers yet. And then um, the uh, 
Coalition Against Domestic Violence, the Missouri Coalition Against Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault said that St. Genevieve reported, which means people called their coalition for help, um, 87 in 2017 and 90 in 2018. And then they said that they have one homicide reported in 2018 that was domestic violence. So it is, I had some other numbers. I didn't bring everything. Um, on the, this is the, um, what the coalition, kind of their paperwork and stuff. And what they do is advocate legally, um, you know, um, state capital for laws and stuff to benefit domestic violence, yeah. And then um, they also do education where they'll come to areas or you can come to them and they'll educate staff and just regular people that want to learn more. Um, they also oversee um, education of facilities and care given to the victims of domestic violence. Um, let's see, they had 103,000 domestic violence hotline calls. I wanted just to say a few things. Um, they had 35,983 uh, domestic violence services that were given, but they had to turn down 30,826. So it's about a little less than half they had to turn away because they don't have the funding and they don't have um, the beds and stuff. Cape just put in a 40 bed domestic <coughs> violence shelter and it's full almost all the time. Bon Terre's is full all the time. Perryville's got one that's this full. This money, where does it come from? What is money? It, oh, to take care of these. You say they're, they don't have the funding. Well, they... Where does the original funding? Um, I don't know. I can't say exactly. I'm sure they have some state funding. I know the Cape area just got $100,000 on a, on a, they do a, a catwalk, a fashion show. They do a fashion show every year. Oh, they do money raisers. Yeah, they, they raised 100000 this year. Last year, I think it was 85000 that they raised with it. So, that, so it, it is some private, but there is some public monies. Um, let's see. They had 12,000 people that were sheltered and they had 26,000 that they were not able to shelter in 2018. So that's like twice as many couldn't be sheltered. Yeah, and that's when you're asking for shelter, it's usually because there's something violent, boom, happened. You know, there's different ways that people get help from domestic violence and one is like a big violent episode and they scoot them away and then they try to get them into a shelter if they can. Mm -hmm. And then another way is like a lady wants to leave or a guy wants to leave and kind of makes a path and then gets away, you know. So there's different ways of getting help and there's different ways of calling for help. Mm -hmm. So because we have a national hotline, I forgot to bring um, the poster, but um, the county um, grant covered some domestic violence posters and I hope people see them and we've been putting them up around the county. They're red and black and white. And uh, anyway. Hopefully that'll give some, but it's a, the poster promotes a, the uh, National Domestic Hotline. And if you ever call the hotline, I want people, if they think about calling it, to go ahead and call it. They're very friendly people on the other end. They don't ask your name. They don't, it doesn't cost anything. It's all anonymous. And they can talk to you about your situation and what you need and what they can offer you and what can be around your, you know, neighborhood, what they can do to help. And it's very non-judgmental. Don't be afraid to call. You can call them. If you want to call them a second or third time, you can call them. But they'll talk to you. It's not just like they check things off and they're done with you. They actually have a conversation back and forth and get a feel for what you need. And, and maybe you need a shelter. Maybe you don't. Maybe you need a counselor. You know, maybe whatever that you need to be set up with, you know, they'll set you up. And they, they'll give you the, either they'll set you up or they'll give you numbers if you want to do it on your own later. So that was one thing that I wanted to let people know about the hotline is it's very comfortable hotline. Um, Not the, judgmental. Yes, yes. And it says that on the poster, something like no fees, no names, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the shelter and housing, they call them bed nights when each bed, which includes kids and everything, they had, uh, what is it, 394,692 people, that, um, adults, youth, and children that they gave a night to. 
in 2018. And then they also have transitional housing, which is kind of like a step down, like you hear with the uh, prison people come down to a step down house or a drug person would come. It's that way with this too. And they had 55,320 total bed nights given last year. Well, so you, you can't even imagine that much problems, and, mm -hmm. you know. Like I said, it was uh, was it one in three, one in three women now, and one in four in men. Area, what area did this, this is this numbers? is um, this is Missouri, the Missouri, yes, Missouri. Coalition Against okay. Domestic uh -huh. Violence. That's what this is, and that's um, why we're promoting this and why the county's bringing it to the citizens is because there are such high numbers, and we do have some that are being reported, but we want people to have, you know, like an interaction and what they can do to help and how they can get help or whatever they need to do. Because the speaker said she can just speak, but she said that, you know, yes. and I told her, I said, I'd like to have a back and forth because a lot of people feel like they've been there, done that, they know domestic violence, you know. <laughs> and other people are like, you know, they might be victims or know somebody and, and say, I, I don't know what to do to help them because I've talked to them and, and I can't get them to leave, you know, or whatever. So she would help you know, because she's dealt with this her entire career, she could help us, you know, bridge the gap a little bit for the citizens or whatever. So, yeah. I'm a big talker. Yeah, you're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, on the regional statistics, there's, um, we, we're in the southeast region, and they had um, 1,255 people um, receive services, and um, 2150 were not residential, but they had 1,700 that were not met, the needs were not met. So they're getting people from, people that don't live in the area coming to Southeast Missouri. They all have the different numbers, you know, because they don't want to get serviced where they probably were abused at maybe, but you're, you're getting out of residential people coming into your thing, so. And that makes sense for all of us. Yeah, yeah, so <coughs> that's about it. They have 20 hotline calls every hour in Missouri. Yeah. So th my point in bringing all those statistics is that it is a problem. Domestic violence is a problem. And I'm sure we know people, everybody probably thought maybe somebody was at some time and you just don't know how to help them or what to do. And we're hoping that uh, Mary Ann coming and talking can help, you know, inform people. Her name is Mary Ann Robertson. Robertson. Mm -hmm. And she's from? Um, she's with the Safe House for, for Women down in Cape. And then she also is with a step at a time uh, counseling. But she doesn't do a lot with that. She's mostly with the Safe House for Women. Mm -hmm. She's got like a little side business where she helps clients because she can only do the Safe House for Women clients. You know, you have to be with them, so other people want her services. So she has a little on the side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, have you ever done this before, Kathy? Done what? Had a program like this? Um, I've got a lot of history with domestic violence. I, I totally just remembered something I was going to say. It has no respect for socioeconomic groups. I've actually spoke with a surgeon I know, you know, that I've met through this. That uh, she's a surgeon, and she was a victim of domestic violence. It just affects anybody and everybody. Nobody, nobody's immune to it, you know. Sure. So, no, I meant, did you ever have a program before, like this, or has there ever been one where you know, like um, how many people's coming? Or I've got a sign-up sheet, and I'm kind of sad. <laughs> Not a lot of people are signing up to this point. Don't you but, think that's because they're afraid somebody might? Mm -hmm. Find See? out something about them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yeah. I've I've got some with the school district that are coming, and um, I've got of course some health agencies and stuff that are coming. I've got some out of town people who do do business in town, and they want you know because they service St. Genevieve, you know they're going to come a few. But yeah, I was kind of surprised that we I haven't got a response I thought I would get. But I also know it's taboo. It's the skeleton in the closet. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to, oh, yeah. to see you coming or going, you know. This room hasn't been in here, hasn't been uh, very long in the years, has it? Been I mean, it long. hasn't been like Could 30, you? 40 years in business? 
Um, this is just a lunch and learn that we're having. Yeah, it's just the, 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 actual, the, the domestic violence. <clears throat> oh, this agency? Yes. Oh, it's been there for a long time. I don't know how long. They, um, I don't want to say lobby because they actually form the laws. You know, a lobbyist kind of wants you to vote their way, but yeah. they actually help form the laws. And they do that. They do that. They do education of, like I said, the general public mm -hmm. and, you know, specific people like um, probably our police departments and stuff have got, been educated through them because they're kind of the leader in it. The so. program that was several years ago at the, um, Oprick, you remember that one? Probably about six years ago. You were there. Was I? And I was there. Um, the old I think it was... Um, was it the Bontel Bon Terre Shel Shelter coming over and talking to us about what they do? They were talking about having a safe house and basically the same thing as this. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember what kind of a program it was. But at that one it was all people that were on um, different organizations around town. Mm -hmm. hmm. um, are you familiar with the Community Service Forum? That's, I think that's who was there. Um, yeah, the community service forum, I didn't even know it existed. But um, it's organizations within our county, people right. who, they don't have to live here if they do business. Some of them do business in St. Genevieve. But it's like, I think it's like 60, I, I'm, don't quote me, <laughs> but it's like a lot of and agencies. They have them meetings every month, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, once a month they have a meeting. Yeah, that's what it was through. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that what I this is there. too. Yeah, it was educating people about the fact that it was in existence, mm -hmm. whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And I know they were talking about a safe house mm -hmm. and domestic violence. And now they have shelters. Um, com we're, we're serviced by our county is serviced by Comtree. They have a shelter in Jefferson County, and then there's a shelter in um, St. Francis County, and then there's a shelter in Perry County, and then further away there's one in Cape. That's the safe house for women, and that's how I know Marianne Robertson. So, but they, I don't know if it was the safe house or a safe house they were talking about at that. Mm -hmm. I think they were just gonna open it. It was relatively new. Perryville. So. There's this the regional crisis center. It was probably Perryville's. But I thought it was a very good program, but I could see from the way they were talking where people wouldn't want to come, you know, if it was happening in their house because they wouldn't want other people to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's, that's sad, that's hard. Because it, I mean, it does kill. I don't know if I have any stats on how many actually people died. I know we did have one in 2018 in St. Genevieve that died from domestic violence. So well, I think that actually, <clears throat> of course, dying is not good. <laughs> but no. the person in that dies and stays alive. Do you know what I mean? Emotionally dies? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they just, they just don't know where to go. They just give up mm -hmm. and take it day by day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially if they have um, kids in the house where they want to protect yeah. their kids and they'll do anything because, I mean, they might even threaten to kill themselves or the kids or the victim. They could kill, you know, whatever they want to say. Mm -hmm. um, it says if there's a gun in the house, there's 500% more chance of it being fatal if there's a gun in the house. <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah, it's, it's a substantial, you know, effect on our, even our economy. Some of this that I have is, um, they had a total of 8 million days of paid work each year is what the um, victims of domestic violence lose, 8 million days. The cost of intimate partner violence exceeds 8.3 billion per year. Um, it says 21 to 60 percent, which is pretty vague, of victims of intimate partner violence, which is domestic violence, lose their jobs due to reasoning stemming from the abuse. 
So, and then... That is so sad. Yeah, I mean, the, the numbers are that big. so many people need help. Mm -hmm. So many. I yeah. mean, both ways. Mm -hmm. Financially and mentally. Mm -hmm. And both the male and female. I mean, it just, you don't think of it that way, but... Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it can be the other way around. Yeah. But they can, those, the people that are involved in that, if they don't want to approach, come to this meeting, they, there's a resource that they can go to. Yeah, um, there's the national, they call it the hotline. It's the national abuse, so the national domestic abuse hotline, but it's called the hotline if you Google it. And um, if you call that, that's the friendly voice on the other side that'll just talk to you about what's going on. You know, she'll give recommendations. She'll encourage, you know, you to probably encourage you to get some kind of resource help, you know, and so they'll give you ideas like how to, even to get out of your area or something, if you want to get out of the area, how to um, pack like a, a bag and have it at a friend's house or put it in the trunk or something like that or hide a key. They'll go over like um, to get, if you want to get away, you can get um, like your vital records, birth certificates and social security card and all that, if you can get that ready for you and your kids or whatever and put it, you know, behind the tree or whatever in your yard, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they come up with all these ideas. When you talk to them, they've had experience and they know different ideas to come up with and they can help you get away, right. so. So is there information out where people are aware that this is available? Um, <clears throat> or do you think most people are afraid that husband and wife find out about it or live in or whatever? <clears throat> I, I put some up at the community center. So they're, they're at the community center. Um, I'm trying to think. I've emailed them. I've given them to um, the businesses and stuff. But there's but no as far really as, widespread. Nope, uh, that's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what and else can I do? Asking, <laughs> that's why I'm asking the questions, you mm -hmm. know, because some people might not even know the help's available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they might be afraid to try to get help. Yes. So we've kind of got the posters kind of hidden a little bit around the county. Mm -hmm. So I think if they come into a poster, then they can see where they can get help. But if they go to the hotline, and then they also have a text number, and they actually said the texting numbers is more popular now, I guess because everybody texts. But you could be texting and your abuser could be sitting next to you, you know, and he won't know what you're saying. <clears throat> so that'll be good. And they also have the um, call for a pizza. I don't know if you saw that on the world news. Did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, uh, I, I thought everybody knew it, but they put it on the world news. I'm like, huh, maybe not everybody knows it. No, I didn't know it. <laughs> well, they have that one gentleman on there that uh, got a domestic call. Tell about yeah, it. Yeah, they, uh... They, this girl asked for a pizza, mm -hmm. and he said, I'm not a pizza. And she, she goes, yeah, I'll go ahead and take a pepperoni one. And he goes, well, I knew something was up when she said that. But I thought that was kind of known, but I guess it wasn't. But you, if you're in an abusive situation, you call 911 and you order a pizza. And when they tell you that they're not the pizza place, then reinforce that, no, you want a pepperoni or you want a whatever. And they're supposed to put two and two together and then ask you, you know, is your abuser near you or, you know, are you in a safe place and, you know, mm -hmm. do you need um, police to come or something like that. I don't know what they exactly say. I'm not a 911 person, but, you know, they will ask you security type questions and then you answer whatever you want. Like, if you want it, then kind of answer like, yeah, I'll take extra cheese. And if you don't, you know, if, if you are, you know, he can't come, then say, no, I don't want, you know, anchovies, <laughs> you know. So you would answer in those regards. And then they can get you help and he doesn't know. The, the problem with all that. Saw the <laughs> well, well, let's see. Also, you wouldn't get a pizza. No, you wouldn't get a pizza, yeah. but the police would probably come. Because <laughs> the point, I think, would be to, to get the police there. But uh, the Bring biggest problem. <laughs> Bring a pizza with you. The biggest yeah. problem with that whole thing, though, is a lot of times the victim isn't strong enough to, get, to ask for the help. Not because they don't feel they can mentally yeah mentally mm -hmm. yeah the the physical 
when it comes to abuse, people think of the physical stuff and that they had it so bad because they're physically bruised or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's the emotional way more. Yes, it is. It's so more debilitating, people. definitely. Yes. And they'll say that if you talk to people who have been abused, and even like Mary Ann, she'll talk about that, I'm sure, that it, it's the emotional, you know. Um, so. You maybe should ask Don to broadcast that? It's on TV. I saw it today. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don Pritchard? No, um, I mean her talk while she's I was thinking about seeing if it, they could um, put it on TV and a, stuff. Yeah, I have it live or recorded where mm -hmm. it could be played. Uh, and, even mm -hmm. radio yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Or yes, YouTube, on YouTube. On YouTube or... Um, yeah. It's a lunch. Something like that. Lunch and learn. A lunch and learn, which means we're going to get you. We're going to provide See, lunch over a work this day. Was on before because and where's this going to be at? Um, the sports complex, which is community, the community center in that new building. Oh, community center. Mm hmm. Because it's the county, so the county's giving us the spot. Um, yeah, it's such a shame. It's so sad. Mm -hmm. It's very sad. Josh, and when is this? What date is it? If. Hmm? What date is that? The 11th of December. 11th of what? December. December. It's a Wednesday. <clears throat> and then she'll be there early. She said she'd come early, and if anybody wants to tell her things that they want her to talk more about, and then she'll stay late, she said, and answer any questions that people might what have. What time is on that? Um, it's 12 to 1 is the when she's going to talk, but it can all be interactive. And then she'll be there early, and if you want to come early and meet her or whatever. So... Yeah, but yeah, it's open to the public. Anybody that wants to come, and if you want to come for a RSVP friend, or? yes, RSVP so we have enough food yeah, that's right. <laughs> and seating. Yeah, it's uh, somewhere I put on there for uh, seating for lunch slash seating. So, but I yeah, the, yeah, yeah. My stats are all about how prevalent it is, and so it is needed. It's just a matter of if we can get people to come and learn more about it. Mm -hmm. Be nice for someone, just even if they're not abused or anything to come, and then they may have members of family even, or even friends that mm -hmm. are being abused, mm -hmm. and they would be able to see the signs mm -hmm. and know what's going on. Or they could just, they don't have to necessarily even know what's going on. They can just say, hey, I went and I found out all this stuff and I didn't realize that that was even called abuse. And maybe yeah. somebody will hear it and say, oh my gosh, yeah. I didn't know there was help. <laughs> you know? yeah. I didn't know other people went through that. You know, I thought it was just me because mm -hmm. I affected somebody recently and I had no idea. I'm like, I had no idea. And it was amazing. I'm just like, well, that was a waste of time. And she's like, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea that, that you were understanding something different than what I was saying, but she was reading between the words, so. Hmm. So you never know how you're going to affect somebody, but it's always, I think it's always good to get education. Mm -hmm. I, think it's, I think it's sad when somebody says they know it, been there, done that, I know it. That's a closed mind and you're not going to be open to things. So I think you should always be willing to learn a bit, something a little different. Yeah, when I heard this was going to happen, I was thinking, People, I mean, it's a closet thing, so mm -hmm. people are not mm -hmm. going to want to come. Um, we originally opened it up just for professionals is what we were originally doing. Oh, okay. And then we decided to go ahead and open it up to everybody because why not? And we, we haven't had a huge response from the professionals. Oh, you still have a few weeks before it mm -hmm. comes up. Yep, I'm going to still talk around and see what I can get going. Yeah. So, but yeah, originally it was for the professionals because some of these I had gotten questions from professionals and I'm like oh well if you guys don't know I got somebody that I can now come up and explain it to you <laughs> yeah. but they didn't sign up so so that might be a good thing to um, put posters in churches all the and, um, and, uh, all the churches have gotten them from the community service forum they've sent them to all the churches to the leaders so all the, I assume, pastors or whatever have gotten them. That particular, mm -hmm. it's not hanging. Mm -hmm. Or I haven't seen it. Yeah. There's certain things they can do with them and certain they can't. You know, it's... I guess I could follow up in that. 
needs to be out. And if a church wouldn't do that, well then. No, they were sent to all the churches. The church. Yeah, they were sent to all the churches yeah. from the county forum. Yeah. So. There would be nothing wrong with hanging that in the church. Mm hmm. Now, if it was a hold down or something like that, <laughs> that would be maybe yeah. a different story. But yeah. something like this. Well, they were sent to all the, the churches. I don't know who exactly at each church got it, but the, the community service form has connections with basically everybody in the county, and they sent them to the to the churches. So. Yeah, because you know when I when you called and said you were going to do that, I was. I got thinking, you know, people are not going to come <laughs> and sit in front of a bunch of people mm -hmm. because they'll be too embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Well, only you know, if it they has to be, up to it. It has to be where they feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have to be in a situation where they feel comfortable, like if there's two or three people sitting together, mm -hmm. you know, and somebody says something and then somebody else. Like the me too, yeah. like the me too thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some people don't like to talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It it's a tough situation it because is. people. It's really sad. Like I said, it's really prevalent, but people don't don't want to. I think a lot of people feel judged if if they're the victim. They feel judged because they weren't able to keep yes. their boundaries. Yes. You know, you have a boundary where you're supposed to be safe, and when somebody crosses that, you feel like you didn't protect yourself and that you failed. And so yeah. I think it, it goes more with the victim mentality where they have a low self-esteem, and that's how they get they think misused. Difficult. Yeah, yeah. If they hadn't done this and this, it wouldn't happen. Yeah, I think that. And then you've got the other side where the um, perpetrator or whatever you want to call them, the abuser, is domineering and doesn't want anybody to educate anybody. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know, so yeah. you've got a double-edged sword. And the person knows that. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to be very, um, probably not even pay attention to it because they, they know it's only going to cause them trouble mm -hmm. in the long run, which is really, really sad. So I encourage everybody to bring their friends and say, well, Susie's going to go with me, so I thought I'd better go with her because she wants me to go. <laughs> And it would be so, nice if a bunch of people from town would just go, but then everybody that would be there would think, hmm, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the hazards of small towns. I know, that in a small town, but if you mm -hmm. were in a city where nobody knew you, you, would, just, you would not think a thing of it. You mm -hmm. would go I don't and, think this is necessarily that abused people would go. This is more for anybody and to keep their eye out. Yeah, yeah. the wording of this, like I said, it was originally meant for professionals, right. is um, what is domestic violence? Because a lot of people don't understand the financial and the spiritual, and there's all different ways that someone can control you. Mm -hmm. And any way that you're being controlled, that you're not allowed to be free, well, then that's abuse, like, misuse. Right. Yourself, you know, if you go, you're not abused, you're not, mm -hmm. you know, in any way like that. But you go and you learn these things and you think, like you said, Susie's. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And maybe you can go and ask her what's going yeah, on. Yeah, that's what it says. It says, um, what is domestic abuse? And it says, why does she stay? You're wondering why is she staying? Um, why don't they tell? You're wondering if this is going on in the house or wherever. Why aren't they telling people? So you wonder why don't they tell? Because it doesn't make sense but that they wouldn't learn, say. Then you can give her that information. Yeah, and then what can I say or what can I do? And how can I, should I help? Mm -hmm. So these are, you know, more of a... So it's really not necessarily the victims themselves. No, no. But people that might be able to help them. Correct, correct. This is centered, and it says, bring your questions and situations, and they will be discussed. Learn how to identify and help victims of abuse. Learn about the abuse victim dynamic. So nowhere does it say, you know, if you're abused, we can help you. Right. It's more like learn how to help someone who's abused. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had a good point, Jean. That's very good. So it's not it's not for the victims so much. It's a lunch and learn about domestic violence. So, so are you ladies gonna come? <laughs> Long way off, right? Now. With all the holidays, <laughs> you got a turkey in the oven. That's what you have to worry about first, huh? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's about it. But well, I'll make sure they're hung up in church. I'll ask about them.
Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that's something that even if somebody knows somebody, you know, but then that's very tactful too, mm -hmm. how to approach them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what um, and started that's this. Something she can talk about too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, that's probably what she is going to talk about. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what started this. Is I I heard a few people, professionals, tell me that mm. <laughs> they didn't really, you know, why why does she, why does she stay and you know things like that. And I'm like, okay, you need some education. Let's get you. <laughs> You know, get a different perspective because sure. usually it's given, presented in the usual way, and she's going to try to present it in a different manner that makes you think more about it. Mm -hmm. So, that's very interesting. All right, ladies. Well, thank you very much, Kathy. Thank you I for hope having there's me. There's a lot of people show up. Yeah. Yep. Just call um, and uh, reserve that? your. What's that number on lunch? Here? It's uh, five seven three. Eight eight three zero six six eight. Zero six six eight. Second. Okay. Um five seven three eight eight three zero six six eight. You need to call to reserve a seat. Yep, so we have enough food. <laughs> no, and that's for December eleventh, what is it? December eleventh, yeah, it's a Wednesday. Wednesday. That's, uh, the day of our last show also. This year, <laughs> Quentin's coming. Yeah, they still. Have you talked to him? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I talked to him. Yeah, he's supposed to come. come. He said he was. More yeah, the kids Kim would be ready. To be here tonight, but they did show up. Yeah, and also Jeff said he would come back. Yeah, he said yeah. he was. Yeah. Coming he's back. supposed to have come back, and he hasn't showed up either. Yeah, because he has that shop with God. Yeah, and the Christmas at the park. Yeah. Is coming. That's what they were mm -hmm. supposed to talk about. And um, the Art Guild has their annual Christmas show. It will be on the 6th from 4 till 8, I believe it is. Anyway, it starts at 4, so you can show up Friday evening. And then on Saturday, um, from we'll be open all day long Saturday and all day on Sunday. So there'll be cookies and um, cider, and water, and beautiful art. Mm -hmm. Nice Christmas gifts for smaller things and larger paintings. Decorate your home. Mm -hmm. So everybody out there, come on by and see what's happened to the museum. There's new windows in it. It's nice and bright in there. And it's <laughs> new windows. Beautiful artwork. It's, yes, okay. for sure. Beautiful artwork yeah. there. Yeah, there's new really, windows, really there good artists in. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. very good artists in St. John. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, and uh, there's new places open. Um, Leon Bosler is now in Reinhardt's, and Reinhardt's a guest in there. Oh. And Janice um, Rattari, Janice Rattari, I'm sorry. And uh, so Allie's got a few things in there, and Diane Wilson has a couple things in there, and of course Leon and LaVita and uh, Charlie, and Mike Oakenfoos, mm -hmm. a beautiful, beautiful wood turner. Mm -hmm. His bowls are fantastic. Mm -hmm. what, does, uh, boss, what is it now? Is it's it? uh, Sycam Silver Sycamore, I think is the name. Okay, and what is it, just art, or is this art of any kind? It's, it's art and uh, um, of any kind. He has. Um, they have car wood carver. And yeah, that's what no. I mean. Art in the in not just paintings. Not just paintings. Art. No, it's art. Oh, okay. And where's his location? Well, and he's, there's a boat in there that he did that is so big. Oh, it's so beautiful. Wow. Hmm. That's worth going and seeing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then there's also pottery in there. So he has a very nice selection. And then Rick Bayers is up at uh, Tanglefoot on Main Street in uh, Festus, mm -hmm. down in the basement. He has a very nice gallery, too. Mm -hmm. He opened a couple weeks ago. And, of course, Jean Reese over <coughs> yeah. all the regular places. But the art 
the art guild is right across from church and the Duberg Center in the old museum. I think it has museum on it, and I, we'll have our sign. I think the sign should be up by then. That tells everybody that we're there. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. It'll be decorated with Christmas lights if we can get enough electricity. <laughs> so, anyway, we'll have a great weekend next. I guess that's next weekend. Huh? Yeah, it's coming right up. It's All coming right. to an end. Another week from Friday. Yes. And then December 13th is when we have our Christmas show. Uh, right? Uh, or December 11th. <coughs> yeah, 11th. The 13th 11th. is yeah. a Friday. Yeah. December 11th. The yeah, 13th is Juanita's. It is. Hmm? Juanita's party is the 13th. Juanita's party is the 13th. Oh. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I knew there was, no, I, I, there was something going on there. Okay, so on the 11th, we're having Quentin. And I've talked, a couple people mentioned maybe coming, but I, they don't know for sure. So we may have a couple other guests with Quentin. But since there's only, I guess, one musician this year, did you ask anybody else? No, I didn't. Well, anyway, we'll have Christmas music from the children for sure. Eric and they are so good. He, he said that they are. They should be ready by Christmas. Okay. So that'll be great. <coughs> the last time I talked Those to him, he said, cute. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> and so anyway, thank you, Kathy, for coming. Thank, thank you, you for having me. You are welcome. You come back anytime you want. And <laughs> Please I, let us know. I hope that that goes over well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, I hope people come and get educated. Right. <coughs> so, good night everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Have enjoy your Thanksgiving and then... I don't eat too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not fun. Everybody overeats on Thanksgiving. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll be back on the 11th of December with our Christmas show, and then it'll go into 2020. Can you believe this year passed so fast? Oh my gosh, don't know where we're at. Holy moly, huh? <laughs> so good night, everyone out there, and thank you for watching. Thank you. And you have a wonderful rest of the year. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> there we go.